Hello and um, welcome to a short tutorial about transitions. Um, now Pinnacle Studio 22 has a new way of doing transitions and Pinnacle have introduced this because uh, there's, as far as they're concerned, a problem with you changing the sync of your timeline when you add transitions, particularly after you've already made the project. So um, in order to explain what they've done, first of all, I'm going to show you what the problem is with Studio 21, which is loaded up here. Um, here on the timeline, you'll see a very simple project, uh, which has got a couple of little clips there that need to stay in sync. You'll see why. Um, this shot here, when we cut to it, a, a caption appears at the same time as the cut and it disappears at the same time they cut. And then there's a sound effect added to the last shot. Uh, which needs to coincide with the bike hitting the camera. Now let's say we want to put a transition here on this cut here between these two clips there. Um, now there's a number of ways of doing transitions in studio. The, two most common ones are uh, to use either a page turn thing here to drag a transition out um, or you can drag one from library um, and i'm going to drag them from the library because it's a little bit clearer what i'm doing drag it down to the right of the cut now nothing's changed on the timeline transitions appeared there and as you can see it just it moves from the shot the bike leaves frame and then we mix nicely to a, a moving shot now it's not the most dynamic of junctions because we're waiting for the bike to leave frame so let's now have a look at uh, adding the transition to the left Ah, and there is the immediate problem. You'll see that happen. Uh, because in order to create the overlap when you drag a transition to the left, it slides everything up to create that. Whereas when you add it to the right, it actually extends what we call the outgoing. So that's extended the clip to create the overlap. But the other way that actually just moves everything up to create the overlap. Now, that's given us this timeline sync issue because this caption here doesn't appear until the duration of the transition after we've cut to the shot. And it also, it, it's still there a second later. And the other thing I've just done, of course, completely ruined the audio sync of the sound effect. Now, you can work around that in fact, it's not really a workaround. It's just a case of knowing about the Alt key. Uh, so if you hold down the Alt key and drag the transition down to the left of the cut, it doesn't do that thing of dragging the whole of uh, the clips on the same track over to the left. So it uh, creates the transition overlap by extending the incoming video to the left. Now what we've got is a moving shot to a moving shot. Good, not a problem. I accept this, of course, in this case, it is a little bit of a, a bit naughty, really, because look, there's that lovely bush there. We start the transition and the bike hasn't passed it in this shot that we're coming to, even though it has passed it in that shot. You can see it a little bit more clearly if I change that from back to a clock wipe. And we go like this there. There's the bush. Now the bike's past the bush by quite some margin there. And yet the bush is still in the incoming shot. So we've actually made a bad edit um, because we haven't pulled it up. We haven't, I've, I've done a nice match cut um, because the bike leaves frame and then we cut and we can't see the bush. And in actual fact, if you, take that clip back just a few frames you'll see the bush
Okay, as you can see from the splash screen, I've now loaded up Studio 22. It's the same project. Let me show you what happens with the transitions now. We take our crossfade, we drag it down, and it just wants to sit and bridge the cutting point between the two. It's put the transition in the middle. So it's not actually had to move anything and it's extended the outgoing a little bit that way, half as much as it would do, and the incoming a little bit that way, half as much as it would do in Studio 21. So we've got there a transition which works actually really well because even though the uh, the match points uh, aren't absolutely spot on, it, you wouldn't tell. The bike's still moving, so we've got a dynamic edit. The incoming's moving, and by the time it's faded up, you've got no sign of... There is just a tiny hint of that green bush there, but nobody would really notice. Great compromise, very good. Um, the other thing that you can do, once you've dropped it on the uh, cutting point, and it's straddled the edit, you can drag it. So we can create um, the same edit we had when we used the Alt key so that that didn't move and uh, extended the uh, the incoming video. Same problem with the slightly dodgy continuity with the bush. Or we can drag it the other way. And we've got, well, we've got the same thing there. The, it's not the bike's left frame before the transition starts. And not only can you put it in any, either of those three places, you can adjust it. We can go about there and make a judgment, a value judgment on what we're getting. Yeah. Actually, I'd rather have a little bit more of the bike in frame before we go and make it there. Well, maybe, oh, I don't know, too much of the bush. I don't know, but you've got the opportunity there to do alteration without any danger whatsoever of changing any of that thing, which is what, after all, Pinnacle uh, were after. So what's the problem? <laughs> the problem is that not all projects or edit points that you want to create a transition are, are as nicely behaved as this one. Let me just show you something. If I remove the transition again, um, this clip here, the first clip, Let's move that up to there and investigate what's going on. You can see that for at least two seconds after we've chosen our out point, there's still moving video. You can see the time codes go. And then even when we reach this dead meat where the clips run out, although this is a still frame, there's no action in it. So it's not that offensive if you were to use it. So that's absolutely fine for at least you've got at least a two second overlap possibility there. And then the incoming clip, well, that just stretches all the way back. That's moving all the way up to the edit point for, in fact, it goes back about 20 seconds. So those bits of uh, material are really good for creating overlaps wherever we want. We haven't got a problem and Studio 22 behaves really well. Now, I've created another project and replaced those two clips with two clips that have been created in a different way. I'll talk about that in a minute, but let's first of all just put the transition there. Okay, and let's play the transition at normal speed and see if you can spot something. Well, I hope you saw that even on the small sort of section of the frame, uh, if I jog through it, scrub through it, as we go forward, the shot starts, the incoming shot starts to come in, and then that appears, which is a shot from another part of the movie. And then that fades out. And if we go back and look a little bit more carefully at this, when we start mixing through, here. This shot that we're coming to isn't moving, it's frozen. So what's caused that? Well, the first clip here, we extend it. 
The edit point out of that clip is right on the last usable frame. The bikes disappeared and the point, the place where we got this video from could have been a movie or a pre-edited clip that you've made yourself or something you've captured from analog. Um, you want to use the very last frame there, but immediately afterward it's a completely different frame. Um, and so that just shows through the transition. So we can't use any of the outgoing past the edit point. And as for the incoming, well, that goes straight to what we call dead meat sometimes, a frozen frame. And so there, it doesn't come to life until the edit point. So both of those clips are not giving us any chance to overlap the video. Uh, we can uh, just put our transition back and say, well, oh, let's, let's do it on the left. Well, when you do it on the left, you, it's much clearer that you're mixing to a static shot. And if you move it to the right, then wow. So Studio 22's new way of doing transitions has some really good positives, but it's also got a few negatives. Uh, if you work with scene detection, for example, all your, all your uh, clips are going to have hard edges, no leeway. Um, and if you're editing old projects, you have an issue. And if you're just going to do a movie and then just go back uh, and want to change a match cut, which I did, which works perfectly well, into a transition, you might well find that uh, it's tricky. The problem is that Pinnacle haven't left the gateway back to the old way of doing things. You can still make those transitions work, um, but it's not as easy to do. You just need to apply uh, a little bit more thought to it. So um, let me show you how in Studio 20 two you might want to fix the bad transition that we can make uh, with these two clips which i've already demonstrated the problems with um, we need to overlap the two clips on the timeline to get it to work uh, so there's two simple ways of doing that one is to use the power of multi-track editing, which of course is something that Studio is very good at, um, and say, right, well, let's make these two clips overlap by putting one on a separate track and then moving it up to cause the overlap. Well, there we've created a gap. However, of course, it's pretty easy in Studio to stop that gap happening. Um, the most obvious way is just to select all the clips to the right before you move it. Uh, and you do that with shift control and everything that hasn't gone past the edit point there, well, after there's a gap or anything that's further up the timeline that can be shifted to the left will be when we do this. There's a little overlap there now. And if I bring my crossfade down and add it to the upper timeline it's only doing one half but of course the lower track is going to show through let's trim it so it's the same length uh, as our overlap that we created it's a bit shorter than a second but nevertheless that was just a, a freehand guess at how big an overlap we needed and now we should be able to see here the overlap has been very successfully done. In fact, that's the edit that we wanted. That's the edit that we created in Studio 21 um, when we used the drag to the left and let it pull up, but we've got it all in sync. So that's that's a that's a great way of doing it. Um, you say, oh, well, hang on, I've got something on that track. You've got, in plus and ultimate, you've got so many tracks you don't know what to do with, to be fair. So you would just, uh, you just say, uh, 
insert new track above there we go we've got the space to do that so what was the other way well if you are if you just don't really don't want to disrupt all of that and you would quite like to use uh, an automatic way of doing it a semi-automatic way of doing it um, you can do it this way we, we're going to want to grab a second or so from the outgoing clip um, so let's delete a second or so from the outgoing clip there I've accidentally also uh, split the music there. I didn't mean to so there and we've uh, now got that little chunk we're going to take out now when we delete that chunk if we're in smart mode and the program can do it it will move everything up unfortunately the music runs all the way to the end so I'm just going to lock the music track to take it out of the smart equation and delete this clip here there we go everything moved up and now we'll drag our crossfade down and this time we'll drag it onto the outgoing because that's what we haven't changed the incoming but we've removed that length of material from the outgoing and our transition now should also work because well it does you can see it working there um, and again we've re remained in sync um, there's a third way um, which you could do in Studio 21 but currently you can't do in 22 which is to use multi-point trimming uh, which takes quite a bit of explaining but once you know how to do it it's easy but unfortunately there's also a bug in Studio 22 that doesn't allow you to do that what I'm hoping um, and I hope they're listening is that Studio 22 will in the future have either the legacy mode re-enabled or in some way this method of pulling up all the clips that can be pulled up and of course um, they'll have to do the sort of programming that's done when you um, uh, when you select your automatic trim points can be added as a new additional feature to Studio 22 so that if you hold down the Alt key and you decide to add a transition to the left or even to the center it'll automatically overload overlap the clips for you but also bring the tra tracks up if they don't do that well there's the answer I'll just show you the answer you just need to do a little bit of work and once you understand why these flash frames and freeze frames are happening it's the work of just a few minutes to fix them so I hope that means you can have fun with your transitions and not trouble with your triples and thanks to listening to this rather long and rambling tutorial um, but uh, I think it's something that may be of use to you. Good night.